Hello, I'd like to demonstrate for you today uh, my home-built, self-designed uh, grain thresher. This was designed primarily for uh, my spring wheat harvest. This is hard red spring wheat, and I uh, kind of did it as an experiment this year. Found that uh, threshing or removing the kernels from the stock is is probably the most labor intensive part and uh, even though I don't have a tremendous amount of this this is about uh, maybe little less than half of what I got not a lot but I, I'm hoping to uh, increase production next year and I also have quinoa this year and uh, flax and I'm hoping it'll work as well for those two uh, types of grains slash seed um, anyway let me show it to you so basically I just turned the machine on there's some uh, rotating brushes in there mounted on a wheel can't do a tremendous amount at once but it's it's not bad as long as I can get it in there make sure the seed heads are fairly even more or less and kind of work its way in there. Just kind of go slow at first, otherwise it catches, pull, pulls it in and jams up the system. Pretty dangerous design. You can easily pull your arm in there, so you gotta be real careful, but that's why I've got this little plastic thing down here. I gotta guide and hold my hand on that. That way it gives me a little extra advantage in the name of safety or I should say in the name of keeping my fingers wouldn't exactly call this safe but it does the job Pretty good. There's a few left on there. Do a little more. All right. So as you can see, we got, this is what we had before. About that amount. All that weed on there. And now we're down to this. Nice clean straw. You could use for something. I don't know, making brooms or something. So there you go. So I'd like to show you uh, a little bit about how this was built. Um, essentially this machine was designed on the fly, just kind of experimental. Had to make several changes of course, that's why there's extra holes here and there that were drilled and you know then didn't get used. So anyway, most of, most of this machine is from scavenged parts that I got for free from Craigslist. Uh, the base is a uh, is the base from a patio heater. This is actually a stainless steel enclosure here with a little steel base. And uh, I've been hanging on to this for a while. I just knew I'd come up with something to do with it, and here we go. And what's perfect about that <clears throat> also is that it, it had a, uh, a propane tank in the bottom, and so there was this little latch and a hinge door that opens up. And it just happens to be also the perfect size for a five gallon bucket, which is what the uh, chaff and grain and you know some of the straw makes it through. But essentially that's uh, what, what catches it. And then underneath here, so tip it back a bit. I actually uh, cut a hole in the bottom of the squirrel, squirrel cage fan and then folded the metal out and put this aluminum stuff that I got from I don't know, a dumpster or something, and uh, made a little chute so the stuff actually falls through, lands in the bucket, and uh, there we go. And then, uh, as I said, this is a squirrel cage fan that's been modified fairly significantly. One thing I had to do was I had to turn the, uh, the actual fan portion around so it went the other direction. 
and uh, it's driven because the original motor was far too fast for this application. I mean, the thing just, you know, it's made to kick air out. It doesn't make any air at all this time, even though the, the blades are still there. Essentially, what I've got here is a, a motor slash gear drive mechanism from a, an office duty paper shredder and it's kind of you know it's heavier duty than the one you might buy for your home use um, so it works quite well it's about uh, 65 rpm i think once it's uh, all said and done and then i've got some various metal pieces that i scavenge from other junk and uh, this this nice stuff came out of a dumpster and anyway what i did here is i put a this is actually a piano hinge from a early 1900s piano that i took apart I've got it set this way so I can open it up. And as you can see, I've attached these wire brushes around the fan. Unfortunately, I miscalculated, and so I've got to buy another one to stick here. But uh, this is the really the only thing I had to buy for this. And so there's about $10 worth of uh, steel brushes here that I had to buy. I bought them from Harbor Freight. And... Uh, I, I couldn't think of any way to make something like that, and that just seemed like the logical choice. They uh, they look a little banged up, but for the most part, they're intact. The the main ones that are missing are from when I was um, I had to cut a groove in the back here and do some machining and drill holes and things, and that was where I really ran into trouble with the with the bristles getting pulled out. But uh, they're actually not looking too bad. I mean, they're in pretty good shape. I think we'll get a lot of use out of them. And then I had to put a special piece. This actually used to be mounted up here and I moved it to the bottom and that way it keeps the material inside and doesn't, doesn't fly out of there. So, well, that's about it. And then we got a, well, let's see, there's a little switch that I stole off of something. And uh, it's even got a built-in circuit breaker. So, well, that's, that's about it. So, uh, yeah, trial and error, no plans. I did look at some uh, YouTube videos. Most of them were shot in uh, third world, third world countries, you know, where they don't have the money to buy uh, expensive machinery and they're trying to move past the old manual method of beating the wheat or uh, stepping on it and things of that nature. So they're, uh, they're mechanizing, but they're doing it slowly in some places. And uh, I'm interested in doing this on a low, a small scale. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to go out and buy a $500,000 combine to do half an acre of wheat. So thank you for watching.